Good morning. We uh, continue with the Now the Feast liturgy. It should be tucked in with your bulletin in your worship book. And we'll make a couple of little tweaks here and there reflecting the, the, the season, uh, including a change in the offertory hymn uh, to one that is posted on our board and, and reported in your bulletin. So, uh, so the, the liturgy should be familiar to you by now. We also welcome those who are tuned in on a live stream this morning or perhaps looking in later uh, through the week. We're glad that through this electronic means you can be with us too. Uh, please, uh, please worship and sing and pray with us. Um, there was one other thing I meant to mention and I should have written it down. So it can't be that important. If I remember it, it'll come in the announcements. But what about names for prayer? Marie France? Mary France? Mary France. Any others? Manfred. Manfred? Okay. So Janita. Janita will hear the Mary? Okay, well, let's, uh, let's begin worship then this morning in the, front, in the back part of those red books, hymn 526.
to the second page of uh, the Now the Feast booklet uh, near the bottom. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We're seated for the reading.
The first reading is from Genesis 18, 1 to 15, and 21, 1 to 7. God, in the form of three messengers, announces to Sarah and Abraham that they will have a child. Sarah, because of her advanced age, laughs at this seeming impossibility. But nothing is impossible for God, and in due course, Isaac is born. Now, Sarah confesses, everyone will share in her joyous laughter. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf tender and good and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, There in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, Oh, yes, you did laugh. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son, whom Sarah bore him, and Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now, Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, Who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Today, Bruce is going to be leading us as we chant uh, some verses from Psalm 116. It's on the back of your bulletin. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I called. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. 
precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, The second reading is from Romans 5, verses 1 to 8. We are no longer God's enemies, but have peace with God because we were brought into a right relationship with God through Christ's death. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. Word of God, word of life. And be to God. reading, let me just remind you, we sing that verse repeating the words of Peter, the apostle. Uh, as Jesus began to talk about going to Jerusalem to die, and uh, while that message confused the disciples in many ways, Peter realizes there's no other place to go. Uh, there, there's something he still senses in Jesus that is of, of, of central importance. So he says, Lord, to whom shall we go? There's nowhere else to go. There's no other teacher for me to follow. I'll follow you even to Jerusalem, uh, even if I'm not sure why it is you're going there to die. Uh, we sing to say this, this gospel is the word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the ninth and 10th chapters. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. 
Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother James. Uh, Andrew, excuse me. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon, the Canaanian. And J Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I mentioned last Sunday that the lectionary, the, the three-year schedule of Bible readings that we, we use in worship, give preachers too much to work with this summer. Last week, I provided a reintroduction to the Gospel of Matthew as we picked up the story during Jesus' ministry in Galilee, long before the stories of his death and rising that were featured in Easter, at Lent and Easter. And week by week, we'll also be working our way through Paul's letter to the Romans, which provides the most organized summary of the apostles' beliefs. I'll probably get to that in a sermon next Sunday. Today, I'll say a little bit about the series of passages we are reading from the book of Genesis which emphasize God's unique relationship with Abraham and his descendants. After what some biblical scholars call prehistory, the stories of creation, Noah's Ark, the Tower of Babel, the bulk of the scroll or the book of Genesis is devoted to the story of a man who becomes best known to us by the name Abraham. And if we were to take the view that the Bible simply fell from the sky, the literal word of God, it's the only story worth following. From among all the peoples of the world, God selected Abram, as he was first known, to become the patriarch of God's chosen people, ignoring everyone else. But as you know, the Bible didn't fall from heaven, nor was it composed by people who fell into some kind of trance, writing things they did not know or intend. These sacred writings were written by people who tell their story of their encounter with the divine, very much rooted in their own time and culture people as likely as you and me to be able on the one hand to express deep faith and insight and on the other to be blind sometimes to our own biases and limitations. So as most of the passages were set to, uh, to ink and scroll during the time of the Babylonian captivity in the 6th century B.C., in the case of Abraham, about a thousand years after the events they recount, the Holy Scriptures, including the book of Genesis, become the book of the Jewish people and describe their particular experiences in God's presence. As I've said, all the others whom God might have met over the course of all the ages are not part of this narrative. So it naturally focuses on Abraham and his wife Sarah at the exclusion of all others, whose descendants eventually become the people who live in Jerusalem of Judea. 
it lifts up their close chosenness, rather, by God. So last week we heard that God, who is known by a variety of names in the ancient manuscripts, Yahweh or Jehovah, El or El Shaddai or Elohim or Elion or Adonai or perhaps one of other one of other seventy two names attributed to the Almighty. This this God, known by so many names, selects Abram or Father almost at random. This Abram, whose ancestors are from Ur of the Chaldeas, the, the Delta region of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, near the Iraqi city of Basra, not far from Kuwait and the Persian Gulf, God chooses, chooses this Abram to make his appeal. This Abram had left the home of his ancestors, probably up the waterways of these great rivers to the city of Haran in what is now southeastern Turkey. And as a sign of his wealth, along the way he takes with him his extended family, his servants, and his livestock. He's doing well for himself. He's found a new place to call home. It is a man who has no background or history with the gods of Canaan or Palestine. Yet out of the blue, the one who becomes known to us as the God of the Jews asks this Abram to relocate again. Just imagine this. Some of you have made these kind of journeys. Uprooting from uh, Europe, perhaps. Coming to this new land and in some cases moving again to another part uh, of the world or of this country. Abram is asked to make those same perilous journeys. And when God makes that request, and when Abram listens, when he opens himself to this message, when he readies himself for that journey, Paul tells us in the book of Romans that God reckoned it to him as faith. This saving faith, part of the Lutheran formula you remember, we're saved by grace through faith. Paul says that faith was the key thing. And it leads God to give him a new name, Abraham, now the father of many nations, and his wife Sarai to Sarah, with the same shift in meaning. So from the moment of this Abrahamic covenant, God's promise of many descendants and a new homeland, it is this family and this family alone whose story we're going to follow through the whole of the Old Testament right up to Jesus. And that story after Abraham himself begins, as you heard today, with the birth of their son Isaac. For the time being, the question of whether this same God communicated with others, also assuring them of divine love and blessing, is set aside. It's going to be taken up in a reading about Hagar and Ishmael next week. And perhaps through other things we'll hear from Peter and Paul as they speak about God's spirit being poured out not only on the Jews but on the Gentiles creating the early church. For now on, for the time being, as we listen to these stories, we're going to be zooming in on this one family tree. And we'll have to save our questions about God's love for other people until a later time. Still mindful that the one true God of heaven and earth seems to have a way of calling and welcoming others that we might not expect calling and welcoming others who might be outside of our comfort zone, that they too with us might one day become the people of God. So one story now, we'll see how it opens up later. Amen. And so now by a peace which passes all understanding, let us keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hymn 575.
to page nine in your worship booklet. With Christians of every time and place we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. For the earth and all its creatures, we pray. Equip farmers, farm workers, and all who labor on the land to plant seeds and produce a harvest, nourish crops with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine, restore lands ruined by pollution or misuse, God in our mercy. Hear our prayer. For Trinity, Latean, Lutheran, and the whole church here and around the world, we pray. Seek out disciples and send them out with authority to proclaim good news. Bring healing where there is pain and counter the forces of evil. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who govern, we pray. Empower those who seek peaceful solutions to conflict and emburden those who advocate for all who are oppressed, especially in the Sudan and Ukraine. Work through systems of government to establish justice throughout the world. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who suffer, we pray. Accompany those who feel helpless, alone, or abundant. Embrace any who long for successful treatment for mental illness of freedom from addiction. Heal those who are sick. Especially, we pray for Joy and Tim, Phil, Eric and family, Dick and Carol, Bob and Helen, Martha and Jane, Marlo and Daniel, David and Janet, Adrian and family, Vera, Erica, Kathy and Bill, Heather and Dan, Sylvie, Bodan and Natasha, Kathy, Brianna and Sebastian, Brittany and Michael, Brandon and, and family, Bradley and Elena, Babita and family, Rosemary, Janita, Martin, Manfred, and Mary. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For fathers and father figure, we pray. Console all who long to be fathers. Children entrage from their fathers. Anyone grieving the death of a father and father who have lost a child, draw nail to all for whom this day stirs up difficult emotion. God, in your mercy. Hear our For all the saints, we give thanks. Receive unto eternal care all those who have died, especially, do you have any names? Rosemary. We have Rosemary and Janita. 
and fill us with hope that does not disappoint. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayer and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Find the way that is feeling safe and comfortable to you to share expression of such peace with one another. Christ peace. Yes.
Today's offertory hymn, the one that prepares us for communion and expresses our thanks to God, uh, including the offerings we present, hymn 486. and peace. On the night of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, 
broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his command to love one another, his life and death, his resurrection and his ascension, we pray for his coming again, even as we sing. Amen, come Lord Jesus. Amen, come Lord Jesus. Spirit, that all of your promises may come to us and your whole creation. Amen, come Holy Spirit. Amen, come Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ, our Savior and our friend. for God to address you as our Abba when we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from our time of Deliver us from the evil. For the kingdom and the glory of yours, now and forever. Amen. Remember, we switch verse 2.
This is the bread of life, the body of Christ given for you. Truly, this bread is Christ's own body given for you. By grace, this bread has become the body of our Lord. This bread truly is Christ's body.
he said. We sing the hymn, Thanks Be to You. The God who calls us across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Good morning. Before I go one step further, I want to thank all the fathers for a happy Father's Day. Who are here and who are not here, we thank them. In June, the Outreach Committee invites you to support the work of Welcome Hall Mission as it cares for some of the most vulnerable people in our city. Join us for coffee and conversation after worship today. Until the washroom are finished, we'll set up in the main hallway. There will be, short meeting, there will be a short meeting regardless the fall retreat after worship today. Meet here in our worship space in front of the piano after you have grabbed a snack. Adult membership class continue on Wednesday evening this spring via Zoom. Pierre is looking for people to help paint the new washroom this coming week. Offer your help after worship today. We'll provide equipment and supply. Are there any other announcements?
Any other one? Okay. Can we stand and sing our closing hymn? 535. and then each verse twice. Go in peace, serve this, share the harvest. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.